John the Baptist, what did John, what did Yochanan say to him? I need to be baptized by you. Right. You don't need to be baptized by me. And he says, let it be so to fulfill all righteousness. What under what hupa naman means is basically, Caleb, what you kicked us off with is under the curse of the law, but we should under what we should pause and understand what that means. Since the since the fall of man, all of us, all mankind are under the sin and death, right? right. And in the world of where there is sin and death, God had elected, right? He showed kindness to Noah. He showed uh, by his own sovereign choice, right? He chose Abraham and he said, you're going to be the vessel through my blessing. I'm going to bring blessing into the world. If the world was already full of blessing, then what good, then what? Abraham's like, hey, man, you know what, God? Keep your blessing. I'm doing well. (laughs) I've got it good. No. Abraham wanted that blessing. And the promise that, you know, that the best way God to, could get Abraham's mind around it was for him to start counting stars to realize that he's not going to get it, that he can't intellectually calculate the vast, the immensity of the, of the blessing and the distance in time. It's going to be beyond Abraham's lifetime, way beyond. So hang on, and, just, that, and so the idea here, though, is that then the Torah is given to Israel, who is of that family line. And what does the Torah do? The Torah given, did the Torah at Sinai make Israel get to the promised land quicker? No, it actually, their sin got bigger. The, the sin of, in, the, in the wilderness, 40 years, was increased. You had the Korah the Korah's rebellion. You had the spies who wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb. Um, You had all the complaining, all these people, they all, all that had to be exposed. They, those people had the Torah and they saw God's mighty power firsthand and it did not solve the sin problem. It exposed the sin problem. Right. Exactly. They were, they were under the condemnation of the Torah. That doesn't mean the soul goal that that is the exhaustive description of the of what the torah is all about otherwise why would yeshua said the why would they ever talk about the greatest commandment is to love god with all your heart soul your strength why would we ever talk about look your traditions have put aside the commandment that says honor your father and your mother or you know we have all these examples that are in the scripture love your neighbor as yourself well, who's my neighbor, right? There, talk about debate of terms. That's in Luke's gospel, right? Well, who's my neighbor? Okay, so yeah, they're arguing about what words mean, and that's 2,000 years ago, so we can do the same today. We can argue about what words mean, and we can say, look, we need scripture to help us orient what these things mean. Under the law, then, so when Yeshua comes, it's like, I, I love it, in Matthew. How does Matthew set up the gospel? Abraham, David, right? Babylonian captivity, Messiah. Those are the core points. He's like, the, this is the framework of God's salvation plan from, he doesn't start with creation because he assumes if you're going to start reading about Abraham, you'll understand. Yeah, background. you'll know. Abraham to David, David to the captivity. Well, what's the captivity mean? That's the failure of Israel to obey. Is the, is the land will observe her Sabbaths, right? The land will keep her Sabbaths. That's what God said. Because Israel's disobedient. Israel's gone. The covenant remains. Daniel's in in exile reading Jeremiah about the land keeping her Sabbath. And, and um, that's when he had, and he's he's confessing, we've, uh, we're under the curse of the law. They come back and they start building the temple, a temple that never has the kavod, has the glory fill it. Um, although it's there, it's a humble temple for a few hundred years for the per- Persian and into the Hellenistic era. You have the Maccabean issue, then about a hundred years of independence, and then Rome comes in, and then it's, you know, Rome. Herod, super puffed up wealth in Herod's architectural endeavors. The temple becomes this huge thing in the eyes of men. The Soreg, right, that keeps Gentiles afar is implemented. 
And then Yeshua was like, look, not one stone is going to be left upon another. Because he hated Jerusalem? No, he wept over Jerusalem. Right. Because Yeshua looks at Jerusalem and he sees this is where Abraham offered Isaac or went to offer his son as a burnt offering, right? This is where Solomon built the temple. And they'd made it a den of thieves. This is where all the nations are to, to worship. And you guys have turned it into a bankroll system for your little power corruption. And it's gone. Oh, you think your little club is cute? Guess what? Yeah, okay. So, uh, so back to, so under the law means just because the second temple era had a temple and had an operating priesthood doesn't mean they were in a time of blessing in God's eyes. It, the curse remained. There was still a, a problem. That's why it says like in the gospels, it talks about in Galilee, in the darkness, they will see a great light, right? Why all this talk about Yeshua being a light? Why did the, the greatest Kohen to ever be born, John the Baptist, Yeshua says that's his testimony, not mine. He's a prophet and he's a, he's a son of Aaron. He's a Kohen. But his, he wasn't raised to, to take after Zechariah's footsteps, who served in the temple, but rather go and preach outside of the system that had become, out in the wilderness, and to, and to baptize in the Jordan, to get people out of the, the corruption in the city and the, the misrepresentation of the covenant, and for true repentance, for the light that would come. Yeshua was born into all that. It's true he never sinned, but he was born. It's just like Moses. Moses had to go into Israel to deliver Israel out of Egypt. You mean go? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Messiah had to go in. God, it said, when the fullness of time came, God sent his son to go in and redeem people and pull them out. Okay. So Messiah came from outside the system into the middle of the system with the full weight of the full consequences like you and me. But did it? But his response and his life was absolutely true to the priorities of Torah as revealed, as as they are in God's eyes. Don't miss any clips from Messiah Matters by clicking the subscribe button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and share it so other people can see it too. Thank you.